Hello friends, this is Uts, but then again, my camera is not on, so who can really tell? And today we are covering some basic knowledge for Hag. We're going to be reviewing two games. One of them is straight from one of our streams. We play a beginner build with no add-ons against your average red rank survivors, I suppose. And we show the very basics of how to play Hag. We show... Uh, how you should draw your first traps, what should be your general strategy, uh, long story short, put some in the middle, then work your way backwards, and some basic principles. And in our second game, we actually play Hag on a completely different level, but applying all of these same principles. This was a game recorded during practice for a tournament against a competitive team. The rules were different, so you'll see me use very good perks, uh, very good add-ons, uh, according to the rules of the tournament, of course. There, are, there were some limits. And try my best to kill them. And as you'll see in the second game, despite the pressure, they will get gens done very quickly, and it will be very, very different. And we'll see just how crazy good survivors can make it difficult for Hag, and what things you can do it as Hag to make it hard for them. So with that out of the way, uh, we're going to go into the first game. Uh, then again, uh, let me apologize. This was during a charity uh, event day, and there were a lot of donations. I'm sorry if you find them a bit annoying. Uh, rest assured, all that money went to leukemia research. So with that out of the way, enjoy the first game. Or feel free to skip to the second if you think you're a top-notch hag and you want to learn how to beat really good survivors. Anyway, uh, Fracture Caution is actually a very tricky map. Many powerful loops, even after the nerf. Uh, Hag, however, doesn't really need to worry so much about that. I'm gonna put a one over here. My idea with Hag, always, uh, get to the middle. All right, we got Whispers, so we got something to work with. Get to the middle, put a couple traps near the middle, and then work your way to the back. Whispers is on. I'm gonna try to retreat until Whispers is back off. There you go, perfect. I'm gonna put one right here. We got Ruin, Devour Hope. They're big, they're kind of like gambly perks. We just lost Devour Hope, doesn't matter. They lost 14 seconds doing the totem and looking for it and so on. Not bother about it. I'm gonna put this here for the... And we do have Ruin still, so if we chase someone off this end, that could be really good for us. Sloppy Butcher It's gonna make... Oh, we don't, yeah, we do have Sloppy Butcher. Sloppy Butcher's gonna make that heal take a little bit longer. Hi, Lysis, thank you for the 20 bucks. Thank you, so now we have a that we have half the map more or less covered in this. Using only trapper with sub 200 hours by watching. If I can do another request. Oh I'd yeah. Like trapper match with surge sloppy corrupt and thrilling trapper. It will be done. This part of the map I'm not gonna bother chopping too much. I just want to push this person to our side of the map. Did it work? Oh boy, I think it's gonna work. This is bad because we don't get to teleport fast enough. I'm gonna let it, let it, let it, let it, let it. That hard? Alright. Ruin's doing a number on that gen. Let's pick her up and bring her a little bit closer towards the side of the map that we've trapped. I'm not gonna bother here. She'll be escaping too quickly. I'm gonna put her about there. And now she should be surrounded by about seven traps in pretty much every direction. I'm not gonna bother trapping the hook, I don't think. Because we have one literally right there. And we have another on the side. Yeah, we're all good. Quite honestly. I might trap this totem in the middle here. Hi, Griff. I know, I know. We've been going for a little while. Uh, Scratch Mars by the edge of the map? Hello. Honestly, you could have dropped that and that would have been good for him. Because I didn't insta hit or anything. We have brown add-ons that let us teleport uh, a little bit further. And also... Oh, he's going to go down. Many thanks. Yep. Upgrading my early $9 donation to the $20. Oh, I was a bit late for that, wasn't I? Oh, uh, I know, Gwitta. That was honestly one of the best requests. Thank you, You're so very welcome. Thank you so much. We put this here. There's a pallet there, so this kind of shuts it down. And this girl, as I said, is to Whoa! Hey, Bill! What's he doing, old man? Honestly, this fucking bill might have just clutched this. Not quite. Woo! <gasps> that trap was a little bit too far. Doesn't matter. We got him. Uh, we are giving him a bit of a chance to uh, recover here. Not sure how much I like that. We did, we did put this trap here, and we pre-trapped it. So this is good. 
We're gonna go not trap him. If he's on a survivor friends, he's gonna tell his friends, Oh, I'm okay. I'm not trapped. But little does you know. We also have an add-on to put down traps a tiny little bit faster. Like zero point something seconds. Hello, Jingle Dwight. I think we're gonna hatch him. Unlucky. I think I have I have time. He's gonna go rescue. And told you. Now we reset it real quick. Uh, so the idea of putting a trap in the middle and then going back um, basically ensures that you'll have something to push survivors into and ensures that survivors will not uh, find you as quickly. Hi, Sally Sale. Really? Hello. If you can register for stem cell donations. That being said, can I see a machete man game, aka trapper without using his traps? Uh, not sure if it will be very fun, but yeah, I'll try to do something special for it. Sure. Wow, this girl actually stealthed me out here. I think this is a GG. She might have stealthed it out, but like everybody's down. All right, girl, you want to do that? For sure. Okay, you, sh you sure you want to do this? You are giving me, like, a reason to camp. How do you decide where to put your traps? All right. I'll try to help you. It's very it's very simple stuff, okay? Uh, since these guys are a bit of pranksters, I'm going to teach you some, some very basic stuff. I'm going to put down a trap, all right? Look at this. You see these particles on the ground? You see this little circle particle? You see it? You see it right here? Hey, Hi, cheer pens. How do you feel knowing that playing modern warfare with tomahawks constitutes <laughs> practicing hunting? All right, thank you for making me laugh, dude. This thing right here is the radius. This is three meters by default. You see? What? This whole thing is the trip radius. Look how much you can cover. Think to yourself, you it's like playing chess, all right? The map is your board. How do you place this big-ass um, piece so that it takes the most annoying places? Right. Hi, Layla. All right, so let's let's go over some I let's go over some ideas, right? No, dude, five bucks is a fucking shit ton, dude. Do not ever feel bad. This trap here is good. It will catch someone going for this window, for example. Hi, Johnson. Oh my god. Thank you for I all the requests. You guys I are crazy. Survivors cannot see that radius, no. Except instead of using add-ons, you close the game and go to sleep. Okay. Right, so basically, uh, you need to put it in places where it will be inconvenient. A trap right here, for example, is good for multiple reasons. Let me explain. The more things a single trap does, the better. Look at how many things are happening. A survivor is here, drops this pallet, runs to the shack, bam, hide in the face. A survivor is on this pallet, is looping the pallet, bam, hit in the face. A survivor comes to this generator, then gets scared off, bam, hits in the face. A little bird on the nest falls, and bam, hit in the face. You see how many things this trap is doing? So... Um, for example, let's say that I want to put two traps in this loop. I wouldn't put them right here. This would be a bad idea. Because then a survivor will trigger this trap. They will run. And by the time I hit them, I hit them right and I go... Shh. And then they trigger the other one. I can't teleport fast enough. So I want to make sure that there's diff there's there must be a minimum amount of distance. Right? So the next trap I could put could be right here. This should be pretty good. It would hit someone going through another window, through another the pallet, blah blah blah. Maybe coming out of the basement. If I know those, someone's gonna be in the basement, I pull the closer right here. Interesting to see here that so many people are married. Hi, Munner. Thank you. I am actually getting married early next year, XD. Well, I don't know what them must be like in this in this particular year, dude. What may you actually want to? Uh, honestly, very very simple stuff. There were a lot of things about this game that I didn't understand. And when I looked for guides, there were not good enough guides. There were not enough guides talking about this and that. So that made me want to do it myself. And I also enjoyed the game a lot.
Try saying my name. Uh, Fia King. Welcome, dude. What? Uh, MDT, thank you. Does that teach you more or less the basic of playing Hag? This is a very basic build that you can do with Hag. Whispers helps you know where to go, but you could put a Noed, Bitter Murmur, Thrill of the Hunt to slow down people. Anyways, love what you're doing. Always down to support a good Thank you, guys. I, I love being interrupted by a million dollars going to charity. I appreciate that. Sorry about that to everybody else. Uh, yeah, the add-ons on Hag are amazing, but honestly, you don't even need any add-ons. Her base abilities are super, super strong already. At the start of the match, uh, cover uh, a map at the uh, in the middle a little bit. Put a couple traps in the middle, in the key points of interest. And then work back to the edges. By the time someone steps on your middle traps, you try to corral them towards the part. You don't want to trap the entire map. You don't have the range. You want to trap like a third or a fourth or a, 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 or a half of it. And, you know, roughly speaking. And then push them towards that. The hag is a defensive killer. You are at your strongest when you have a survivor on the ground, survivor on the hook, things to defend. So you want to do that. You can also put uh, traps on the hook. It's always a good idea to just put one in front of it. But this time, I didn't even bother in that case, because it's not always necessary. Alright, this is a competitive practice game. Uh, as I told you earlier, before we go in, just some very, very quick explanation about the rules. These are four good survivors in communications. Obviously, they play as a team. Each of them is allowed to have one different item up to yellow rarity. So, one yellow toolbox, one yellow flashlight, one yellow medkit and probably also a firecracker is the expected items that they will bring. I can see this in the lobby, and of course I am prepared for some of these items, to a degree that you'll see, that's why I'm running Franklin's, to make it difficult for them to use the medkit and the flashlights especially. Those are the items that can really, really uh, help them come out of a bad situations against the hag. So with that out of the way, seeing that I spawn very, very close to the center, on a hill, very visible, it's time to get started and put those traps in the middle. Let's go and do it. So ahead of this hill, we have a bottleneck. This is very important. Put one here. Covers basically a third or a fourth of the ways in. I'm going to try to do the exact same thing around here. And maybe one on one of the two exits over here. There's two traps. Maybe a little bit too close together. But uh, better to put them close. As you notice, I have an add-on to make sure that I put them down as fast as possible. This one here covers many exit routes. Here I am trying to prepare for the potential looping and also the escape paths into and out of the shack. And as you can see, that was the idea. We trap around the middle, then we work our way backwards. And it's around this time that I expect them to either run into my traps or start doing the gens. Corrupt intervention obviously helps a lot in not losing those shins out there immediately. This one here protects the loop a little bit, but mostly is there for the hook. And this is where I find my first survivor. And my idea here, honestly, is to trap a little bit, make them feel in control, but try to harass them into the part of the map that I've already trapped. And you notice that I go on the left so I can push them to the right. This could have been a hit, but I know that it's gonna fail, so I preemptively draw a trap and I'm ready to break this. And this is where the survivor will make the mistake of going to the left rather than the right and taking it easy and takes a hit as a result. And after that hit, him going further into my territory is the beginning of the end for survivors. The moment you have something to defend as a hike, that's really, really powerful for you. So right now, I'm pretty comfy knowing that he really doesn't have many ways to escape this really, really heavily trapped side of the map. So I'm going to take it very, very easy and know that I'm probably going to be able to make this. Here, Dead Heart could have been an issue, but luckily we got that. Survivors were allowed to use two perks max as a team, so we will only have two Dead Hearts, two Decisives, two Unbreakables, but that's still many perks to consider. So now I have a half of the map prepped. A gen is already gone, as expected. Look at how many traps this team is getting rid of so quickly during those few seconds that it took me. Just those very few seconds that it took me to... To carry the survivor, half my traps are gone, and that was really, really good. If a rescue happened here, I think that really would have been in their favor. Maybe they didn't do it because they didn't have borrowed time. I still think it would have been in their favor to, to get that rescue done. That being said, they are not playing at all um, risky or greedy. They dropped the pallet as they should have. Now I'm just trapping the ever-living shit out of this. Here, as you can see, I go for the immediate, uh, immediate uh, insta-hit teleport. 
which works on this Kate, but does not work on the Corvette. Excellent teamwork here, making sure that between the gaps of my attacks, they get uh, a rescue. Sloppy Butcher does hard though. Here, I don't want risk at that hard. That's why I wait a little bit. And Ace goes down and he will be my next target. I need to reset some of these traps, but I cannot take too long here. I see a hole in my defenses. I probably want to trap here. In retrospect, it might have been better to trap on that side of the building. Uh, I do not have a lot of time here to go all the way back. Instead, I'm going to try to trap um, just this hook and get this man here. Unknown to me at the time, the ace had deliverance, which he's going to use very early. He will, just, he will then spring burst out of his deliverance. And as you will see, that will make me miss an attack here. I'm trapping this item to make sure that if he has any charges left, they do not get to be used. I am trapping as I chase. Here's a deliverance and a teleport that misses with a spring burst. And here is how I lose the ace. Luckily, um, I teleport back to the area where I want to be and use the aura reading from the add-on to get a cheeky mind game here. Unfortunately, this team was from NA and their ping was a little bit bad. So that might have been a bad hit for this game. Maybe in her screen, she was uh, safe already. But we're back to defending something. And with two people injured, with medkits missing and sloppy butcher applied, it's really, really hard for them to do gens and heal. But they do just that. Those gens are flying. That's like three gens in like four minutes, despite corrupt, despite three hooks on the way, which is very impressive. And what happens here is actually amazing. Look at this survivor, vault through the window, use life to run out, but also at the same time, look back and disarm the trap that I just set with a flashlight. Very, very, very good stuff. That was a great play. I couldn't catch up to them. They also broke my three gen somehow, four minutes, and we have four generators done. Um, in my half of the map that I got trapped, they somehow managed to get that gen done, which is insane. Now, luckily for me here, uh, this ace who's injured goes down a little bit too quickly. And as you can see, all of a sudden, everybody's down except Claudette. Now, I have to really hurry up here and get everybody down. And once I do have everybody down, I need to mine the potential unbreakables. There might be two unbreakables here, so I'm going to pick this girl up immediately because she's the closest one for a hook. And I'm going to keep trapping here religiously just in case... Another Deliverance is ready. And next I go for Nia. Who I think we down right here. So now we can calm down a little bit. You can see just how close this is. Uh, uncompetitive. Uh, this is basically what you're expecting. It's going to be very quick either way. You're going to lose very quickly. Or win very quickly. Uh, the fact that we could even make it this far. Here I'm just waiting it out. Making sure... There's no unbreakables or anything, because I'm in a winning position. You need to make sure that you have something to defend. If I had not gotten a down into a good territory as quickly as I as I did, as early as I did in this match, they probably would have done gems just as fast or even faster. And then they would have used their decisives, their unbreakables, their deliverances to eventually win the game. And you can see just how insanely, insanely close. Uh, this this match was like in terms of gens i am absolutely baffled how fast they did them despite everything that went on you can go watch it back and it's it's really really baffling here i'm just trapping out the exit gates uh because i know that it's going to come down to hatch i'm going to close it and if there is adrenaline i will need to find that person uh, fortunately for me no adrenaline uh as you can see i am running noid if this match had gone south a little bit more i might have had to camp someone on the hook and no, it might have been very, very critical in making sure that I that I secure one or two extra kills. I will be analyzing more hack games about this tournament soon, the actual tournament games. And you'll see how Noid came in clutch once or twice. But before that, uh, it, it will be a while before those videos are ready. I'm working on them right now. Uh, before that, I'll tell you that it wasn't necessary now, but it, it is a very strong perk uh, on hack in this in this setting. Ruin and Dying was not available back then. That's why you don't see me use it. And also, you're going to see that when I just cannot find the survivor, we eventually call it quits and the game just ends because it is practice and it's not a big deal. But yep, yeah, hopefully you learned something in this match and you are hungry for more. Thank you so much for watching.